Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Sea of Tranquility's Rant Series. I'm your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today is Wednesday, January the 10th, and we've got a little topic here that uh, you know has kind of been brewing with me for a while. Uh, I know I've talked about doing various rants over the last uh, month or so. This one's kind of taken on different forms, and I think uh, I was having like a little conversation with uh, someone I just met over the internet recently, and uh, I think I finally figured out exactly what I wanted to cover on this rant today. So, Lately, you know, I talk to a lot of people, I shouldn't say lately, this has been for, forever, I guess, but it seems like lately I come and I have come encounter with this more often than not. Um, I come across a lot of people who really have stopped trying to hear or discover new music. So they basically, they've got that set of bands or artists that they've been listening to since they were younger. And, you know, maybe right around the 90s or, you know, when they started having, getting married, having kids and families and stuff like that, they basically stopped trying to seek out anything new other than that kind of comfort zone of bands that they know really well, songs that they know really well, <coughs> excuse me. And, and that's fine, right? That's, that's quite all right. Most people do that. Um, and most people, the majority of people, don't have an opportunity like what I have uh, running a website like Sea of Tranquility where we get exposed to tons of new music all the time. So I get that. Uh, what my rant today is is more about, you know, if you are a true music lover, there are very easy ways to go out and find and discover new music, okay? Uh, let's, you know, go by the obvious, right? So we live in an age of technology where you've got like YouTube and Spotify and, you know, Google and iHeartRadio and Sirius and, you know, no short Bandcamp and SoundCloud, all these places that you can go to kind of sample and listen to new music and what have you. So there's, there's really, you know, a lot of avenues to take if you are, look if you're someone who's looking to discover like say bands that are similar. So if you're a metal fan, there's easy ways to find other new you know metal bands. You can go out and read websites like Sea Tranquility, what have you. You can read reviews and stuff. So it's, it's very easy to go out and find new stuff if you're looking for that. Uh, one of the things that I've loved, you know, YouTube as great as it is, it has its drawbacks. You know, a lot of people, especially you know younger folks today, guys. I'm sorry, I hate to kind of single you out there, but it's true. Uh, don't like to buy new music. There's a lot of people out there today who feel that music should be free. So you can very easily go to YouTube and just basically find anything, whether it's live concerts, uh, videos, or just albums that have been you know loaded up onto YouTube. So I get that. So I I like that aspect. So there there have been numerous times where I've gone to YouTube to look up a band or an album. Uh, I'll listen to it. If it's something I really like, I then go and try to buy it somewhere, Amazon or what have you, right? I try to, to try and search for it. But what I really love about YouTube is that, you know, when I'm going and looking at something, I'm watching something on YouTube, you get those great recommendations on the right-hand side for things that are similar. So for me, I'm a, like, complete junkie for, like, unknown heavy bands of, like, the 70s, late 60s, 70s, and early 80s, right? It's just, that's my thing. So, you know, I have discovered all sorts of great, like, underground bands, even bands that were signed to, like, you know, major labels, but may maybe had one album, and then they were dropped, never to be heard from again. So, you know, I've been able to discover all sorts of cool bands, like, over the last decade or so, you know, that I never would have thought to listen to before. You know, bands like, you know, Tucky Buzzard, right? British band. Uh, November. Great late 60s, early 70s, heavy rock band from, from Sweden. Fantastic band. Alpha Centauri, something I recently discovered. Another great band from the Colorado area. Uh, Message, Night Sun, uh, Orangutan. You know, all these crazy bands that most people have never heard of before, um, but I've been able to discover, you know, just by going and looking up something. Even like going to uh, Budgie is a perfect example. So Budgie is a band that's been around forever, one of the unsung heavy bands in hard rock and metal history, right? Um, I never really got into them until probably about 10, 15 years ago. Although I always knew of a bunch of their songs, I never owned anything by them. Uh, one day I just decided to take the plunge and that, you know, that opened up a whole can of worms right there. But, you know, you go onto YouTube and you start looking up like budgie songs and you'll get recommended a lot of great kind of unknown, undiscovered 
heavy rock and early metal, proto metal type bands, right? So it's really so it's just so easy to find stuff nowadays. You know, another thing too, like I, I went to uh, I don't know about a year or so ago. I've always been a fan of Chicago, right? Big fan. Love the early Chicago stuff. It's great stuff. Um, I've always kind of liked Blood, Sweat, and Tears, but other than a very good, the limited uh, greatest hits set, that's all I ever had for years. So finally one day I was like, you know what? I want to just kind of dig into Blood, Sweat, and Tears a little bit more because, you know, so many people talk so highly about a lot of their albums. So, of course, I went on to YouTube. I started listening to other songs other than what I had in the greatest hits, and I'm like, I'm really missing out. Okay, so of course I went and got all the Blood, Sweat, Tears albums, and I'm glad I did some great stuff there. But by doing that, it opened me up to other bands from that same time period that were out there with Chicago and Blood, Sweat, and Tears, but maybe didn't quite get the notoriety. Okay, bands like Chase and Sons of Champlin. Okay, Bill Champlin actually then went and joined Chicago in the early 80s, but he had a very good band throughout the uh, the, the 70s. Uh, Ball and Jack, Chase. Great horn bands, okay? There were so many good rock and roll horn bands in the 70s. So again, some stuff that, you know, never really, never really discovered. Uh, you know, new wave of British heavy metal, okay? I've always liked, kind of like the main bands from that area, that era, you know, Maiden, Def Leppard, Saxon, Diamond Head, right? You know, all the obvious ones. But man, over the last couple of years, a band like Satan, never listened to them ever. And discovered some great stuff that they put out back in that early 80s time frame. And now they're putting out great new albums. So again, there's a legacy band from the New Wave of British Heavy Metal that I discovered who's now active again releasing great new material. Win-win for me, right? Praying Mantis. Another band from that era, from the New Wave of British Heavy Metal, early 80s. I always remember their album covers, right? Cool album covers. Never bought any of their, rec their records. Discovered them not long ago. What a great band. Got a bunch of their albums. Who else? I tell you, another band, okay, th this is probably the uh, the one that really resonates with me. So, Venom. Now, back in the day, talking the early mid-80s, uh, I actually bought the LP of um, At War With Satan. So at the time, this was, I don't know what, 85, 86, when I bought it. I was in college in New Paltz. I was living on campus. So it was probably 84, 85, something like that. And for me at the time, that was pretty damn extreme. So, you know, extreme metal didn't really exist back then, but you had like Slayer coming out and Celtic Frost, um, you know, Possessed is not, was not there yet. You know, Venom were out. You had Motorhead, which were pretty crazy for the time. Um, but I remember buying that LP and thinking, this is kind of crazy. This is even a little scarier than Merciful Fate. That's the other band I was thinking of before. So I kind of, for all these years really just kind of cast Venom aside. I really never gave Venom another chance. Kind of didn't do it for me. Yeah, I like some tunes, whatever. But it wasn't until like the last couple of years that I said, you know, you know, I talked to so many people, fellow metalheads, who really think highly about the music of Venom. And I said, I'm going to give these guys another chance. So I did. And let me just say, you know, Welcome to Hell, Black Metal, At War With Satan, and Possessed are four great fucking albums, folks. You know, as shitty produced as they are, and they're raw, they're rough, you know, these guys weren't the best musicians or singers on the planet and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, their their songs are at times a little ridiculous, you know, the satanic lyrics and whatnot, but man, there's like a charm about those old Venom songs that you just can't deny. You just can't. It's like, I, I pop on one of those albums today, and I'm like, you know, why did I not get into this, you know, 30 years ago? I guess better late than never. Okay, that's the point of this whole show here. It's like, you're never too old. It's never too late to discover new music, whether it's new music by new bands or old music by bands that you maybe didn't get into back in the day, right? So, I mean, you know, what other stuff, I mean, you know, as far as new stuff, I'm discovering new music from like Swedish bands all the time, folks. There is so, if you love a classic hard rock and roll from the 70s, you really got to be discovering and go seek out some of these bands from Sweden. You know, Graveyard, who are, you know, broke up, now they're back together. Horizon, Sienna Root, uh, Captain Crimson, Troubled Horse, Mangrove, Blues Pills. The, the, the list goes on and on. There's so many great, great hard rock 
bands from Sweden. It's just unbelievable. It's not hard to find their albums either. Uh, what else here? What else haven't I covered? The classic bands. Okay, I'm just as guilty as anybody else, right? I have, in addition, you see, I own a lot of music. In a lot of instances, a band that I really like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to own their whole catalog. It's just the way I am. But there are bands and artists through over the years, especially when I was younger, where, you know, maybe I like some of their radio hits, but because I was always a metalhead, you know, or a serious progressive rock fan, you know, a lot of the more pop type artists and bands, I maybe didn't dive too into their catalog for obvious reasons, right? But as I've gotten older, I've gotten to appreciate a lot more of their material. And, you know, case in point, Elton John, all right? Always liked Elton's hits, always did, but I just never felt the need to go and own any of the rest of uh, any of his albums, other than I had a I had a double disc greatest hits set for years, and to me that probably had everything on there that I ever needed. But lo and behold, you know you have something like uh, Sirius XM, right? And you listen to deep tracks or some shit like that, and all of a sudden you hear this Elton John tune, and you're like, wait a second, that's great. That's not on my greatest hits set, right? So then all of a sudden you start going on, you go on to Amazon and you pop up, you know, whatever, um, the Westies album or any of his old albums, you know, Caribou or whatnot. And you start listening to some of these other tracks, you get samples of some of these other tracks and you realize, okay, three quarters of those songs are not on my greatest hit set and those are really good. Right? I mean, it happens all the time. So someone like me is never satisfied with just having the hits. Because I think the point here is that a lot of these bands have a lot more to their repertoire than just those half a dozen or dozen, or in Elton's case, you know, dozens of radio hits and, you know, FM staples. So what did I do? I went out and bought the whole Elton catalog up into like, you know, the early mid 80s where I think his his material started to, to lack a little bit. But uh, there's some just great, great albums. That top to bottom, just really fantastic. Billy Joel is a recent one. So, again, I've had a double-disc Billy Joel greatest hits set for a million years. And recently I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he was saying how he was going and buying the Billy Joel catalog. And I actually, I sat there and I looked. I, pulled, I, I looked up a couple of his, you know, really big albums, like, you know, 52nd Street and The Stranger, right? And I started looking at the song selections on those and comparing them to which ones I had of off that album on my greatest hit set, which I thought was essential, all I really needed all these years. And I'm like, that tune is not on here. That tune is not on here. That tune is not on here. How the fuck can those songs, which are so great, not be on this greatest hit set, which I thought for me was all I ever needed. Right? Shame on me. So now what am I doing? I'm going out and buying the Billy Joel collect, uh, all the Billy Joel albums. Because there's just so much material on them that I've always liked, but for whatever reason, I kind of forgot about thinking I had all the essential stuff on this greatest hit set, which is not complete enough. Not nearly. Okay? What other, other bands that fall into that category? Santana. Okay? You know, yeah, I've, I've always had the first couple albums, which are legendary. They're great. And I had a hits collection. But for many, many years, I never bothered with a lot of those late 70s and 80s, even the 90s stuff. And I just decided a couple of years ago, I'm going to go out and really dive deep into Santana stuff because I want, you know, there's a lot of great stuff that's not on those albums that I have or on the Hits Collection. Boatload of great material. Okay? Same thing with uh, 10CC, another band. That Hits Collection was just not nearly enough. So much great material. Great band. Um, probably like my most recent uh, that I've really kind of, taking a deep dive on it. I'm so glad I did. It's Creedence Clearwater Revival. I've always loved Creedence, but I've always had those two greatest hit sets, which most people think, again, is all you'll ever need. So a couple months ago, I was listening to, again, I think I was listening to, uh, to Sirius XM, Deep Tracks. And over the span of a couple of days, you know, driving around in the car, I heard a couple tunes, Creedence songs, that were not on those two hit sets, that were kick ass. And I was like, I got to have those, right? So I started looking up information. They, they've recently remastered and reissued all the Credence albums. There's not a ton of them. I think there's like seven or eight of them. Uh, and I had a conversation with a good friend of mine who's also a fan. And I said, point blank, I was like, you know, I'm really thinking about diving into this Credence catalog. There's not that many albums. They've all been remastered and reissued. They're fairly inexpensive. What do you think? 
And he says, yeah, there's some good material on there, but you know what? If you have the two hit sets, you probably don't need anything else. I was like, okay, good to know. So I kind of mulled that around in my head a little bit, and I started to listen to more samples. I went on YouTube, listened to a couple of the albums, you know, front to back, and I was like, I got to have these. There's some great shit on there. So I went and did it, and I do not regret it at all. Those, Especially those first like five or six Credence albums are just killer. This is just great late 60s rock and roll, folks. I mean, really good. John Fogarty, what a killer player. Great guitarist. So I'm happy I did that, you know? What else? Steely Dan, another band. I've loved Steely Dan forever, but I all I ever had was like a two-disc collection, which was really good. But I decided, I don't know, like five, ten years ago, I got to go out and get all the Steely Dan CDs. Glad I did. Great albums. What else? Big Star, another band. You know, I like that kind of like that like late 70s, early 80s kind of like pop pop rock stuff. You know, I always liked like the raspberries, like the power pop, I guess you call it. Big Star, another band I discovered. Um, just by talking to people and, you know, saying you know, people recommending stuff. What else here? What else? ZZ Top. Again, another band I've loved forever. Had a couple of their albums here and there and a double disc hits collection for the last 25 years. But it wasn't until like maybe a decade ago that I said, you know what? I know there's more to ZZ Top than this. And man, those first bunch of albums are just like so good. Heavy blues rock. Just killer, killer stuff. So, you know, and, and lately, what my kind of new thing is now, uh, the last couple of months anyway, I've, I've, for whatever reason, I've been on a real blues kick. I guess, you know, acquiring a couple of uh, Gibson Les Pauls has gotten me into uh, specifically like those great kind of uh, less, bluesy Les Paul players. I think, you know, being a fan of Government Mule and Warren Haynes for so many years, is I, I've been on a Government Mule kick the last like year, big time, even though I've always liked them. Uh, and then, you know, being into like Les Paul Gibson Les Paul music, um, guitar style music. I just uh, I've rediscovered some of those like British blues rock bands from like the '60s and the early '70s. So specifically, like the early Fleetwood Mac, Peter Green stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, Savoy Brown, Kim Simmons, and Savoy Brown, uh, John Mayall's Blues Breakers. You know, if you're into great guitar players, blues guitar players, British white boy blues guitar players specifically, who played Les Pauls, you know, Clapton, Peter Green, Mick Taylor. It does not get any better than that. You know, Chicken Shack, Mr. Webb on guitar, killer. Ansley Dunsbar's re Retaliation. I mean, just all this stuff is just like killer, killer music that for whatever reason... You know, has been in the popular domain for decades, but I just, uh, for whatever reason, I never discovered. But all it took was me diving into one of them, and, and in this case, it was uh, the Fleetwood Mac, the Peter Green era, the early Fleetwood Mac. I've always loved Fleetwood Mac, but I never really got into the blues era much. That opened up the doors to all these other bands, okay? Again, I kick myself because it's like, you know, why didn't I listen to these bands, you know, <clears throat> before? But, you know... Your taste change over years. Your 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 taste broaden up. You know, I was for a long time. I was just a hard rock and metal guy forever. Then I got into prog and jazz and that the jazz thing. I'm not even going to talk about jazz today because you know I've discovered so much uh, cool jazz stuff, new and old, over the last you know 15, 20 years. But but anyway, I think the I think you get the point of this whole thing. Oh, and one last thing. Another band I just discovered recently, just from a Facebook thread discussion. Okay, this band called Blackthorn from the early 90s. Graham Bonnet, Bob Kulik and company, you know, like a, basically a one-off band. They did one album. I just picked it up just recently. Holy cow, is that great. Blistering, like early 90s metal and hard rock. It's still, Again, Johnny Van Zandt band, another one. Okay, always loved Johnny. Loved him as a singer for Skinner. Saw Johnny Van Zandt band open for Black Sabbath a million years ago in New Jersey on the Mob Rules tour. For whatever reason, I never, and I love Southern Rock. I own like almost every Southern Rock album by every great Southern Rock band there is. For whatever reason, I never had a, a Johnny Van Zandt band album. Never listened to any of his stuff until the last couple of years. And now I'm like, what What was I thinking? A, a great Southern Rock band. Johnny and his band were kick ass. You know, Angel. All right. My friend Butch is going to gonna kick me about this. But uh, Angel, another great band. You know, they... I was a huge Kiss fan back in the day. They were signed to Casablanca Records. I read Casablanca Records. I remember seeing all the ads and seeing the albums, but back in the day, I never bothered to listen to them. 
never bought an album, just never bothered to see him live, nothing. Until about maybe a decade ago, I decided, you know what, I'm going to give Angel a chance. Whoo boy, especially those first couple albums. So again, this is, this is me. Not everybody's like me. I am always willing to find and seek out new music. Again, I, I get, um, you know, we get new music here at Sea Tranquility all the time. So there's never a shortage of new things that come in, whether it be physical product or downloads for us to check out and review. So it's, it's very rare that I miss out on any of the new stuff that comes out, the new bands, because it's just the market's flooded with it. But I love when I actually go and find stuff on my own. Because that, you know, I, again, I go that extra mile. I try to do it. So I guess the point of this whole thing, me pontificating here for the last 20 minutes, is that it's never too late to go out and find new music. Again, whether it's new music by new bands or new music by legacy bands, don't forget about that either. Okay, because there's a lot of these old bands still putting out good new music. You know, you may not hear it on the radio. You've already gone into that. You may not see any videos and all that kind of crap. And some, in some cases, they may tour live and not even play any of the new music. But you know, it always frustrates me when I talk to fans of legacy bands and they, they talk so highly about how much they love these bands. And they're like, oh, you mean they put out new material since 1990? Yes. Spend some time on their Facebook page. Go on their website. You know, you'll, you'll see all this. It's not hard to find this information out there. really isn't if, if, you're, if you're that interested in it. So um, that's my rant for today. Go out and find new music, people. There's so much out there. There's so many ways to, you know, whether you're still buying physical product, okay, or whether you go out and listen and purchase music on Bandcamp, or, you know, whether, you, whether you're whether someone who just doesn't want to pay for it, uh, just go out and find it. It's out there, you know. Go out and sample it on YouTube. Go buy it digitally or on CD if you, or LP if you, if you like what you hear. Support these bands and and Go out and search for them. They're out there. They're waiting to be discovered. There's, there's great new and old music just waiting to be discovered. You know, for all you old bands uh, who maybe aren't, aren't even in existence anymore and you thought that people forgot about you 40 years ago, there are people like me and I'm sure a lot more out there that are discovering you in all the darkest, most intricate holes and valleys on the internet. It's out there, right? And we're discovering you. you you're, you're not going to be forgotten. So till next time, I am Pete Pardo. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're here on the mighty YouTube. Uh, we've got another rant coming up probably this weekend. Uh, I've been promising you guys I'm going to do one on the rock and roll biographies. I always read a ton of them, and I just kind of want to talk a little bit about those. A lot of good ones out there. Another great way to discover music by bands and artists that maybe you hadn't before by reading you know, about their lives and recording history. So anyway, take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.